Would you like to cut your risk of death in half? Well, improving your VO2 max is one of the best things you can do to reduce your overall risk of death and improve the quality of your life as you age. Now, almost anybody can improve their VO2 max no matter their age. So in this video, I'm going to show you the importance of a high VO2 max, how to use Zwift to maximize your VO2 max, show you my FTP ramp test and the eight week plan I'll be using to jumpstart my fitness as we head into the new year. Let's dive in. What is VO2 max and why does it matter? Well, VO2 max refers to the maximum amount of oxygen our bodies can absorb and use during exercise. The more oxygen your body can use, the better aerobic shape you are in and the more activity your body can support. Your VO2 max correlates very highly with your longevity. In fact, research shows that improving your VO2 max from below average to just above average cuts your risk of death in half. Now, if your VO2 max is in the top 25%, your risk of death is up to four times less than someone in the bottom 25%. That's huge. Bottom line is, is that the fittest people have the lowest mortality rates by a large margin over less fit people. In fact, poor cardio fitness carries a greater relative risk of death than smoking. Now, I don't know about you, but looking at that data, I'd like to keep my, my VO2 max as high as possible for as long as possible. According to Dr. Peter Atia, author of the great book, outlive, you should work to develop your VO2 max to as high a level as possible, ideally in the elite range for people in your age group. Now, elite means the top few percent of all people, not the level of elite athletes, which is going to be much higher. The reason you want to do this is that as you age, your VO2 max drops. So the higher you start, the higher you end up, meaning the fitter you will be even in old age. Now here's the chart that shows those VO2 max. So you can see, for me, at my newly minted age of 59, the elite level VO2 max would be something over 50. Now, given that, it only makes sense, I think, that we would want to improve our VO2 max. The question is, how can we measure and improve our VO2 max in a repeatable and time efficient manner? That's where Zwift comes in. Just like with Zone 2 training, the consistent, reproducible resistance and workout selection available in Zwift makes VO2 max training relatively easy and repeatable. Zwift also has a couple of neat tools that we can use to determine our starting VO2 max and to test our improvement over time. Now, right now, my latest estimated Zwift FTP which is the power in watts you should be able to hold for an hour, is 225. Now, I got this number from a ramp test I did back in February of 2022, so it's been a while. So here's what that test looked like. Now, how do watts and FTP translate to VO2 max? Well, FTP is an indication of your high-level aerobic conditioning, and using some math, you can get an idea what your VO2 max is based on an FTP number. Now to do that, I'll be using a calculator from the Zwift Hacks website. So here's the calculated VO2 max based on my February 2022 assessment. And you can see my estimated VO2 max there at the bottom from February 22 is 51.4. Now. Is that VO2 max that's calculated from an FTP an accurate VO2 max? Well, that's up for debate. And you know what? I'm perfectly okay with that because all I'm looking to do at this point is to see if I can increase my fitness and using a VO2 max based off of an FTP is close enough for now. The key will be to see how those numbers change after eight weeks of training using the same test protocol. One thing for sure, is that the fact that this Zwift calculated VO2 max won't be near as accurate as a proper lab tested VO2 max. Now, I do plan on having my VO2 max 
lab tested sometime early next year. So it will be interesting to see how the numbers compare. So subscribe and stay tuned for that video. Okay, so here is the plan on how I'm going to increase my VO2 max, hopefully over the next eight weeks. So essentially, I've got between now and the end of the year. First thing I'm going to do is establish my current fitness with the Zwift ramp test, the same one I did back in February of 2022. We'll convert that number from the, from the test to an estimated VO2 max using that Zwift hacks uh, chart. I'll spend eight weeks doing targeted VO2 max training along with a lot of zone two. And then I'll test myself using that same ramp test protocol at the end. And we'll see what the numbers are. Okay. Now that you know my plan, it's time to see what my current FTP slash VO2 max is. Time for some suffering in the pain cave. All right, welcome back to uh, Zwift here. I am down in the uh, basement uh, pain cave, or as uh, I like to call it, my wife uh, cringes at this, the cottage of wattage. And speaking of wattage, we're going to see how many watts I can do today on this FTP test. Select that, and let's go ahead and get this uh, going here. So, uh, you take a look over there, over there on the far left is the workout FTP ramp test protocol, I guess. We do start with a five minute free ride to get warmed up. I've already done about 30 minutes of zone two, uh, about 10, 15 minutes ago just to get a little bit of work in uh, and then it'll start at 100 watts it's in erg mode so the game controls the trainer and every minute it's going to increase by 20 watts and the idea is to just keep, stay seated pedal as, consi as consistently as you can and go for as long as you can and then when you give up and you can't pedal anymore <clears throat> the game will uh, record that wattage and calculate an FTP from that wattage. I'll do this test today, and I'll do this test again in eight weeks. If my FTP is higher, that'll translate to a higher VO2 max, and I will have noticed my fitness hopefully increase. The goal here with the VO2 max training is just to establish where I am at this point. So if you're using Zwift or thinking of using Zwift, this would be a great way to start. Give yourself an FTP ramp test. Whatever it is, it is. Don't worry about the number. The important thing is that's your starting point. That's your baseline. And you can use that to uh, evaluate and see how your training is going. But we're starting the first, uh, the first uh, level here, 100 watts. And the last time I topped out at 300 or 320, I think it was the 12th or 13th step. So we'll see how far I go. It'll be interesting to see what my uh, heart rate gets up to here. See if I get my. Uh, recently observed max heart rate of about 173 so we shall see 120 watts now, now this is right about my zone 2 this use typically will give me 117 116 to 120 if I'm about 160 watts and up to 200 watts starting to get feel like I'm starting to work here that's for sure This is right about my race pace heart rate, 152, typically what I'll run a 5K or 10K at. Crunch time here. See how far I can go.
Oh, that's it. I'm done. I'm toast. All right. It says 237. 237. A little higher than February of last year, but more importantly, it's a base to uh, see what I can do here over the next eight weeks. I'm going to go ahead and get cooled down and take a look at the, uh, the final number, uh, do that calculation, see what my supposed VO2 max is, and then go over the training plan real quick and then we'll see Ooh, always fun okay uh how was that for some suffering huh <laughs> uh that was fun in a good way because it showed me kind of where i am at fitness wise at this particular point uh the ftp ramp test is always a good assessment for where you are and uh, it's a great way to establish a baseline that you can then build from. So let's take a look at the file from the ramp test and I'll talk a little bit about what that means in terms of uh, FTP and VO2 max and then talk a little bit about what kind of workout I will be doing in addition to my zone two to help me build my VO2 max over these next eight weeks. So. Um, Let's take a look at the uh, file from Zwift. And if you see here, uh, you've got all these different lines, heart rate, power, cadence, all of that. But you see at the beginning here, when I was warming up, uh, power is a little lightning bolt symbol, 150, 100, you know, that type of thing. To, and then these steps are the different levels. So 100 watts. And so everything up through about the first five or six levels I was pretty much going along 160 watts is my zone two range that I normally train in. And you see my heart rate was somewhere at 120, 124. But by the time we bump up to the 200 watt level, I'm starting to work. I can feel that my heart rate is starting to, uh, to increase up into 130s, 140s. Uh, I get up into the 220, the 230, 240. My heart rate's 150. 155 starting to increase and by the time we get to the end of the test I'm at the 280 watt level my heart rate's about 160 um, and then you may have noticed that the, the last minute or so of the of the ramp test my heart rate spiked up it went from 160 to 170 basically 175 and my breathing got a lot more labored and ragged that was the max and at the very end i was breathing very heavily and uh, heart rate as you'll see here maxed out at 175 that's the highest heart rate i've seen in about a year and a half so that was a good test now what does all this mean it means first that i got a good workout in for sure but how does this uh translate to uh building fitness so let's go back and take a look at the uh, Zwift Hacks website that I mentioned uh, before the ramp test and plug in the numbers to see where I'm at. So I completed the last stage on the ramp test I completed was 300 watts. In other words, I made the full minute, but I made it about 47 seconds into the 320 watt stage before I gave up. So duration of unfinished stage, 47 seconds. My weight 77 kilograms. Like I said, I'm about two kilograms heavier than I was uh, a year or so ago, mostly due to this strength training. So you click the calculate button and the result is an FTP estimate of 237 watts, which is what you saw on the screen. You saw that at the very end of the ramp test, it said, congratulations, 237. And then a VO2 max estimate at the bottom there, 52.4 milliliters per kilogram per minute. Is that an accurate number? Probably not, uh, especially compared to a lab test, which I do plan on doing a full uh, proper VO2 max test in a lab some part, at some point in the beginning of 2024. So you definitely want to be subscribed for that. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button 
click the bell for notifications and give us a big thumbs up if you like what you're seeing here and you want to share it with others and help others become more fit and live longer, hopefully. So, um, but what does that 52.4 mean? Well, it's my number now. And in eight weeks, when I do this same test again, I'm going to use the same protocol, same test, same protocol, as close as I can get it, and then we'll measure the difference. And if that number is higher, then objectively, I more I am more fit then than I am now. But in the whole scheme of things, what does that VO2 max number really mean? If it's accurate, you can see here, this is a chart of VO2 max ranges by age for both men and women. I've highlighted my, my age down here at the bottom, 50 to 59, just turned 59 a little while ago. And uh, for the high uh, and high end is 41 to 49 and elite air quotes is over 50. Now this is elite only compared to the entire population as a whole, not compared to elite endurance athletes. I'm sure somebody uh, with a very high VO2 max who is an elite endurance athlete at age 59 is going to be much higher than uh, my 51 or 52. But is my number accurate? I don't know. It's probably at the high end, which is fine. My goal is to increase it as much as possible and keep it as high for as long as possible into life because all the research indicates that a high VO2 max later into life greatly reduces the odds of death from any particular cause and also just contributes to the ability to be able to be active and vital longer and longer into life. And that's really the goal is to be as strong and vital as possible for as long as possible. And VO2 max makes a huge difference. That's what I'm training for now. So, um, so will my number be higher than that? I'm hoping in eight weeks my VO2 max uh, will be higher than that 52.4 that is being shown now. Um, and I'm going to do a specific amount of work between now and then, which is essentially uh, this video is the first week in November. That's my first week. The eighth week will be uh, ending on the 23rd, 24th of December. In those eight weeks, I should be able to get in at least seven or eight VO2 max workouts. There is going to be a few days where we're going to be traveling, so I might not be able to get a full week of workouts in, but uh, should be good enough to get enough work in to see if I do make a difference. So uh, the goal is to do eight weeks, mostly zone two, like I have been doing, but to add in at least one VO2 max workout in each of those weeks. Now I might do a little bit more, maybe do a small race or short time trial, but the base is gonna be zone two and then a specific VO2 max workout and maybe something else for fun on top of that. So what do the workouts look like? What kind of workouts should you be thinking about doing if you do wanna increase your VO2 max? The workout, and I put one together in Zwift to kind of show you, and this is based off of the uh, research that's been done that in order to increase VO2 max, you want to be operating at a level that's about, that gives you a heart rate somewhere around 90 to maybe even 95% of your maximum heart rate in doses of about three to five minutes each and maybe three to five of those intervals in a session. So what I've put together using the workout builder in Zwift. So if you're on Zwift, uh, you can build your own workout for sure and make it similar to this. So what I've done is I've combined, as you see here, I've combined zone two with VO2 max. The blue area is my zone two power level, which equates to about 160 watts. I do that for 30 minutes after a short warm up. So I do 30 minutes of zone two. Then I do a couple of uh, shorter, more intense uh, sessions or intervals just to get my legs going, my heart rate up a little bit. And then I jump into the VO2 max, which is the orange that you see here on the screen. So I've got five, this particular workout is five intervals of three minutes each, duration one with a rest, duration two of three minutes. And the power level that equates to my 90 to 95% of my max, somewhere around 160 heart rate, should be somewhere around 250 watts. Now you can adjust that level up or down based on your results. You can even do it during the workout in Zwift. 
but this is where I think I'm going to be, and I'll adjust it each week. Now, my goal is to start off this first week with these four, with these five intervals of three minutes each, and then by the end of the eight weeks, hopefully I'll be doing four to five intervals of five minutes each. So I'll increase the length of the interval and hopefully keep the same number of intervals that would indicate that I'm getting stronger in that VO2 max range, and hopefully will give me a bigger number at the end of the day. So be sure to check the description below. I will post links to my Strava profile, my Zwift profile, and also links to the uh, that Zwift hacks uh, calculator that we that we just looked at, as well as any other information. I've got a few other links I can put in there. I think that'll help you understand VO2 max training and uh, hopefully you can start doing some of your own training a little bit more specific a lot a lot of times people just get in the habit of just working out which is great but if you can focus on building that vo2 max in addition to working that zone two those two combined put them together the sum is greater than the parts so you get that strong mitochondria uh, base aerobic efficiency from the zone two and then you top it off with a little bit of, of a VO2 max and you've got yourself a complete uh, aerobic um, pie, right? There's, you've got the, both the, the, the base as well as those peak levels. And all the research seems to indicate if you can do that, you're setting yourself up for uh, a longer, more vital life. And that, that sounds pretty good to me. I'm sure it does to you as well. So that's my goal. Be sure to uh, subscribe and uh, click the bell for notifications when I do post my update videos. I'm going to do that eight-week update, and uh, we shall see if my VO2 max increases. And I hope it does, but even if it doesn't, you can use this own protocol yourself to build your own VO2 max and increase your fitness. All right, that's about it. Hope you found this video helpful and useful. And uh, I've got to get training. I've got a VO2 max workout to do here. So uh, until the next one. Be well.